Uh, of course, a lot of NBA players have been really outspoken yes. about uh, the things that have happened, especially spurred by the murder of George Floyd. And two players in particular, two players who are kind of, I don't kind of, I don't want to put this on them, but they're known for being emotional and whiny and crying a little bit. Who's the second one? Dwight Howard and Kyrie Irving. Oh, yeah. I thought you were going to say Avery Bradley. I was like, I'm not really No, no, no. Okay, yeah. yeah. Definitely Dwight and Kyrie. So Kyrie is asking NBA players to sit out as a protest to racism. Um, Kyrie Irving reportedly told players on a Zoom conference call, I don't support going into Orlando. I'm not with the systematic racism and the blank. Something smells a little fishy. I'm willing to give up everything I have for social report, uh, social reform. Um, I understand you, Kyrie. I hear you. Uh, Dwight Howard. It's a heavy statement, boy. You better back that. Exactly. You uh, know what I'm saying? Like, I want to stop you real quick because what Kyrie just said is what Cap did, right? What Kyrie just said, I'm willing to give up everything I have mm -hmm. for social reform. That's what Cap did. And we've seen what Cap had to endure just to even be accepted again or, or, or even spoken about again. So before you make a statement like, because we've seen it. Modern day in twenty two in the two thousands, this is what it means to say a statement like that. It can be pulled. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get. Ooh, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get back to that. Ooh, that that whole Kyrie cap thing. Okay, that was um, good. It was good. It was good. Right. I don't. I don't think. I don't Kyrie's think. Kyrie's not built. I don't think Kyrie could. Kyrie not built. Carry Collins like clipboard. But it takes a different man, and that's why we 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 paid homage last week, and, and we'll do it again. Like big respect to Cap. Absolutely. Because it's a it's a tough order. Don't need him playing football though. Um, don't, yeah, don't, don't so uh, so Dwight Howard's quote, he said, I agree with Kyrie. Basketball or entertainment period isn't needed at this moment and will only be a distraction. Sure, it might not distract us, the players, but we have resources at hand majority of our community don't have. And the smallest distraction for them can start a trickle-down effect that may never stop, especially with the way the climate is now. I would love nothing more than to win my very first NBA championship, but the unity of my people would be an even bigger championship. That's just too beautiful to pass up. What better time now than for us to be focusing on our families? I um, ah, I uh, I life is loaded. I like both of their energy, energy good. Okay, thumbs up for energy good. And I, good. I have your attention. And I think they don't. Neither of them have really glowing amounts of credibility when it comes wow. to the things that they say. Right. So Kyrie. Kyrie says wild flat, shit no? all the time. He talks about the flat earth thing. He, At one point, he wants to play with LeBron, thinks he's the greatest thing since pants with pockets. At another point, he just <laughs> he wants to go to Boston, and, and he's saying and lead he's his gonna, own team. He's saying he's going to stay in Boston. Yeah, then he leaves. Honor his dad, right? Okay, yeah. And go. then it's there's, there's just been so much. And listen, it is cool to change your mind. Kyrie's a young <laughs> dude. It is cool for you to change your mind. It is, it is fine. It is okay. It has served you well. You are immensely talented. But... When it comes to stuff like this, just like you said, you got to be down to back your words up with, you know, legitimate, tangible action. Is you about it? You brought it. You showed me something that and that you dropped me something today um, with Stephen Jackson talking to Kyrie. Yo, you are you are are <laughs> you are not using this quote for good. So what was the quote? What happened? Stephen Jackson on Kyrie Irving. He understands this moment. He doesn't call me crying. <laughs> and you love this, right? Right? And Stephen Jack is such like an old school uh, Texas uh, African-American brother. So what yeah, he meant was, for good, Yeah, right? this thing was crying. This thing was crying on my phone. Exactly. What he meant for good, we're going to go run. And, and, now, and now Trevor thinks Kyrie was boo-hooing <laughs> on the phone with Stephen Jack. But really what, he, what Stephen Jack Steve, is saying. Steve, Stephen, stack, stack, stack. <laughs> <laughs> they want me to play. I can't shut up and like he was saying like he didn't want to do all these things and I get it. Um, but but stack, but stack. <laughs> OG, come on, OG, you know what I'm about. <laughs> you know he's talking to OG. You know he's giving it up. Couple sniffles in between. OG, um, stack is like okay, young fella, chill. I okay, got this. chill, I just, you, young fella. All right, but you got a hoop though, like and, <laughs> and, and isn't your shoulder messed up? Like you wasn't even hooping anyway. That's what gets that's gets it's like Kyrie doesn't even like basketball, like. I don't want to hear it. Um, no, but I respect uh, I respect the energy. The energy is great. It's what we want to see from people in positions of influence. So we have our influencers' attention, and we respect that. Um, 
But you made this point today about what Stephen A. said, and I yeah. think that was dope. And and share share with them because I, I think, think that's Stephen perspective. I think Stephen A. made a great point. I think it got kind of because um, I first heard Stephen A.'s point, and he was saying they they sound crazy for not wanting to play. They better go play. And then in my head, it's like you know, for so many years, like us as black people, like we just have to suck it up and just go out and do the work, right? But Stephen A. made a great point. Like if. If black people had to rely on this country being equal for us and us having equal protection under the law and there being no social injustice, we would never have any jobs. Right. We would never work a day ever in life. Yeah. To keep it a bean, if you wanted to not hoop until things got better, well, guess what, buddy? You're not hooping for a very, you ain't ever hooping very, again. Get very a new support, long time. Okay? Because you know? it's a thing that's going to take some time. I am on the fence. Oh, shit. I got to get off the fucking fence. This is my show, right? Um, yeah, that'd be great. I think they should play. I think, I think, they, I think when they should you play. I think have, they're going to have microphones in front of their face right. at every halftime, at the end of every game, right. every post-game presser, right. you have the ability to speak your mind, tell people how you feel, and do what Cap did, because that's what Cap was doing oh. at the end of games also. And peep game. This is beautiful, too. This is, so, like, this is a great parallel. What better institution, what better company... In, in, to, to be a part of or associated with than a company that allows you to use your voice, right? So, like, the difference between Cap and, and Kyrie is that the NFL would not allow him to get that off. In the NBA, get it off. I understand that. But you know what just popped into my head? Um, when it comes to, like, Dwight Howard's statement, if every, if every black NFL player decided they weren't going to play... Things would change drastically, just like the protests and the demonstrations that we see, with things changing quicker than we thought they could change. Yep, yep. we get legislation real fast. All we get sudden, police reform legislation. Yep. Mayor Cuomo, I'm sorry, Governor Cuomo is up there the signing shit. I went, ooh, I'm not going to jack that for a while. <laughs> Cuomo has a lot of making up to do in this city. He does, um, he he does, does. He does. a whole he lot. Does. Um, and then you know we're going to get into a story a little bit later with with Trump talking about like signing off some stuff on police reform. It can happen fast. It can happen quick if you protest and, and really cause that disruption and, and are loud enough. So I get Dwight from that standpoint. If every if every black person in the NBA decided not to play, it would just be J.J. Redick and Nikola Jokic out there going one-on-one, -on -one, full court. I think they can have just as big or if not bigger an impact um, in their respective field. They can. I think they can as they play. But the biggest impact, the biggest sound will be would be made if they all decided we're not playing the rest of this season the owners who don't say anything who are really silent who that, are I probably like, like i think i don't think that like we don't need that in the nba i think we need that in like nfl where like your owners are racist no i think no nba owners are racist nba owners are racist <laughs> nba owners are just as racist but like it's the racism in the nfl is stronger than the racism in the nba that's a fact that's Ooh. a fact. Mm. That's a fact. That's what's reported. Hey, because man. if we didn't, because if if Homegirl wasn't recording phone calls with Donald Sterling, he'd still be the Clippers owner, or his family would still own the team. But that right, was a. Right, but like ownership has transitioned though from Ohes. Like how many? Donald, there's only one black owner in the NBA. I'm not talking about. We're not talking about black versus white right now. No, but you have to. About, talking not talking about black. I'm talking about racist owners, and I'm talking about organizations that like don't really bang with African Americans. The, it's way more known, way more known and open in the NFL than it is in the NBA. That's a fact. Well, owners. Well, it's more it's more known in the NFL because of a guy like Jerry Jones. Jerry Jones is a guy that owns his team, GMs his team, presidents his team, does everything for his team, right? Um, to to the point where like he makes personnel decisions, coaching hires, and everything. So old. There are and he, and he's very vocal. He was very vocal with the flag and kneeling about how if anybody kneels on the Cowboys, they won't have a job on the Cowboys. They won't play for my team if they kneel during the anthem. If they kneel when the flag is trotted out there, um, even though the NFL paid, even though the NFL gets money to do that, so it's not really as genuine as they all say. Um, but in the NBA, like owners aren't really as vocal. The only owner that we know is vocal is somebody like Mark Cuban. Yeah. That's it. And, and he's on the right side of history with a lot of the things that he's done uh, for his the team. The Warriors owner. Um, the Warriors or Lakeup or something like that. He's, They're on the right side the of history. Money, but then we got somebody like James Dolan in New York who made no statements about this, who sent out an email, Shaky a secret Dolan. email 
to uh, his MSG employees just saying, we don't know ab enough about this to really take a stand. I was like, you don't know enough about racism? About like yeah. black people getting murdered? There's not much to know. Sure.